Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. Here on Talk Straight Bible, we're about only one thing, talking straight about the Bible. The Bible is the only book in the world that teaches total forgiveness. It teaches God Almighty, the church, and so many other things. You can find all the answers to your questions in the Word of God. And as you know, we're still in Put Your Face in the Torah. For those who are just tuning in, where, uh, you know, the, the, the term face in the Torah uh, stuck to me when I, when I met a young rabbi who had backslidden from the Torah and the family. And his father, just before he left, said, put your face in the Torah, son, for there you will find life. That term stood with me. And so it's put your face in the Torah. I hope by God's grace to have the book on um, put your face in the Torah, which I'm going to include massive information about what we're talking about. Right now, it's just a nugget. So enjoy. Here we go. The new letter today we're talking about is Chet. It's the eighth letter. We just finished the seventh letter, Zayin. And what's interesting about the letter Zayin, of course, is that it represents... Um, give me a second, please. I have so much here that I have to... Uh, Zayin represents, of course, the purpose of humanity and the reality of, of putting together physical, uh, physical work and coming into the Sabbath. You cannot come into the Sabbath if you do not work. Well, we know that Jesus did his work on the cross and his resurrection brought us to rest in the Sabbath. So now the seventh letter, uh, the eighth letter, excuse me, the Chet represents something different, but it's connected. Remember, all the letters are connected. When you do a study on one, and you do a study on the other, they connect before, they connect after. There's so many ways that you see the, the letters work together to form truth, to give us the knowledge of the truth. And when you read the New Testament, reading the New Testament for me is much easier now because I understand that in the Old Testament, the new was concealed. But now the New Testament is the old revealed. So when you study the New Testament, you got to study the first covenant, which is the Old Testament. For there you find the New Testament all over the place. I'm hoping to one day write a book on something that I saw. It's called Pictures. I call it Pictures of the Gospel in the Old Testament. Wow, what an amazing discovery. So the word Chet or the letter Chet is the eighth letter and it represents dynamic. Dynamic such as running to return, running to return. Because understand that we have a lifestyle that sometimes takes us out of the way and we have to run to return. Now, Chet, remember, is the picture of a fence, but it's more than just a fence. It's a close, is a closing place of intimacy. Here, the eighth letter represents covenant. Because covenant is the number eight, as we know. Uh, and let's go, let's go to the word. Let's read that. It says, Thou art my portion, O Lord, I have said that I will keep your words. Now, when we go to Genesis in chapter 2, excuse me, I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 18, we'll get to 2 in a minute. Chapter 6, 18, it says, But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your, wife and your sons' wives with you. Why? Because here the covenant was between Noah and between God and Noah. And so therefore, Noah was uh, commanded to build a boat, an ark, where they will go into. And as we know, only eight people got, got saved. I want, I want you to think about this. I did a teaching a while back called, excuse me, the Galilean Road. And what's interesting about the Galilean Road that I taught, I taught about you know, the gospel and all these wonderful things, how we must, you know, go out and witness. But I started with the life of Noah and the world of Noah. And it's interesting because when I think about all the people, now some estimate there was like maybe uh, 200 million at that time or 100 million. I said, regardless of how many people, even if there was only 500,000, only eight got saved. That's a lot of people that perish, but that's the power of Chet. They did not come into the closing place, the perimeter that God made. That ark was a perimeter for men to come in. And God wanted 
God warned and wanted men to get saved, but only Noah found grace in the in the eyes of God. What's interesting about the letters of Noah, Noach, we have the Het. It is two letters. The number the 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 name of Noah is two letters. It is the Nun, okay, which is the fourteenth letter, and it represents fish. Isn't that interesting? And Het, which represents a closed place of intimacy. Now, when you turn those those words around or those letters around, we have the waters of Noah. And so Noah was chosen to build a place of safety, of intimacy, where God was in the ark with them, but men chose not to come into that place. That's why here, when we look at the psalmist, his words, he says, but you, you're my portion. Now, why did he say this? Because he understood the law. He understood the oracles, the precepts. Folks, let me tell you something. And I say this with all my heart, but with respect to all the ministers of the gospel. If we want to minister effectively the gospel of Jesus Christ, we must first learn what the gospel is in the Old Testament. Some people say you don't need the Old Testament. You just preach the New Testament. That is such foolishness. You need to know what God said in the Old Testament in order for the New Testament to be opened up to you. Like I said, reading the New Testament for me now is so much easier and I see so much more because Jesus was a Jew. His 12 disciples were Jews and he knew the Jewish customs. And so he spoke according to Jewish customs. That's why we have to learn the things that he said. So coming closer to the perimeter of the Old Testament. And so that's what this is all about. So Chet is a place of enclosure, but it also represents, watch this, it also represents the bridal chamber because it is a place of intimacy. And again, I tell you in Psalms 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And that's what this part is. He says, You are my portion. You're the one that I desire. Why? Because your law, watch this. He says, you're my portion. And let's look at the word portion here. It means to share, to have a part, to be territorial. It means to have a land. It means to have possession. And so you see here, he's saying everything that I have. He looked at his family. <laughs> he looked at his, at, his, at, his, at his farmhouse maybe, all the land he had, all of that. He says, This is yours. This is my portion. Everything that you have given me belongs to you. In 1 Chronicles, as a matter of fact, you know what? I want to go there. It came to mind, so I want to go there. Let's go to 1 Chronicles if you want to follow me. Uh, 1 Chronicles, and we're going to go to chapter 29, and we're going to look at uh, verse 14. But who am I? And who, my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? Meaning they were were giving, they were being blessed by God in a mighty way, and they were giving. He says, for all things are from you, and we have given to you that which is yours. So understand, whatever God has given you, it is not yours. We have to learn to hold things very loosely. Because if God wants to take it and use it, we must be able to give it to him uh, willingly. And so if we hold on to things too tight, he has to pry them out of our hands and that can hurt. So be careful that whatever you have in life, it is not yours. As a matter of fact, you will be blessed if you relinquish yourself from everything that you have and say, I enjoy what I have, I'll use what I have, but it's not mine, it belongs to the Lord. So let's go back to, he says, you are my portion. Now here, again, the word portion is three letters. It is the chet, of course. Remember that we, because we are looking at the chet, there are eight verses connected with each letter. So that means that eight, the eight verses, all the verses begin with the letter chet. Here is chet, lemet, and kaf, meaning it is our C, it is, it is our L, and it is our Q. Okay. Now, Chet represents, again, a fence, a place of enclosure, 
a place of safety. But lament represents a teacher, a master, a shepherd, one that has a shepherd's staff. And then the cough represents God's righteousness, God's holiness. So here he's saying, you're my portion. He says, you're the one that fenced me in. You're the one that kept me protected. You're the one that is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then the last is, you're the one that is my righteousness. So in this per perimeter, he found safety in God's intimacy, in God's shepherding, and in God's righteousness. That's my portion. That's your portion. And he says, thou art my portion, O Lord. Here the, the, the name Lord, again, is Yehovah. There's, it's, it's really not Jehovah. We put it in English, a J, but there's no J in the Hebrew. That's why it's Yehovah, Yeshua, not Jacob, Jacob. Okay, Yosef, Joseph, Yosef. So here we see that Yehovah uh, or Yahweh, the one who is self-existing, the one who doesn't need anyone to hold him up. He says, you're my portion. You are the eternal one. Remember that the power of God touches our reality. The power of God touches our reality and it sustains our life so that we may be given to him entirely. Let me give you three other things that the 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 uh, letter Chet represents. It represents transcendence, divine grace, and life. Just as we saw the number seven, it noted the previous chapter that it symbolizes the complete purpose of human existence combining the spiritual level of the Sabbath. So the eighth letter talks about the ability of transcendence with, listen, with limitations to the physical, yet bringing us to another place of unlimitedness. Now, what that means is this. We live in the natural world. But because we live in the natural world, we must raise our eyes up and look at heaven. That is the place that is limitless. That's why we have to understand that the covenant number eight represents the covenant of God, but also the number 888 in Gematria. What is Gematria? Gematria is basically the value number of every letter. Now that we're going to be getting into later on because again, this is just this is just a nugget. But the Gematria 888 represents Jesus Christ and his resurrection. So here, Het represents new life. It takes us from one place. Remember, the ark of God took them from one place to another. It took them from where they were, and they landed on Mount Ararat, where the ark of, the, of, of Noah is still there. Okay? And so we see that it takes us from one place to another. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says this, that we were translated from darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, where there is redemption and forgiveness of sins. Why? Because he took us out of one place by his grace and gave us new life, covenant. And so this is what Chet is all about. And we're going to be looking more into that uh, in the last, in the next seven days, because it's eight days per, per letter. So here, Jehovah, you are my portion, O Lord, I have said. Here is a continuous segment which fills the hole. In other words, he didn't stop talking about it. And that's it's important that we must continually talk about the word of God. Talk about his goodness. Talk about everything that he's blessed us with. The word for spirit is ruach. And we have the spirit of God. Spirit cannot die. The word nefesh is the word for soul. The soul can disconnect itself from the things of God. It can disconnect itself from the word of God. It can disconnect itself from the will of God. So the soul is being saved on a daily because we are being saved because we're saved in the spirit. Understand when, you, when Jesus died on the cross and, and he brought you, you didn't go to Jesus, he chose you. You came to him. He brought you into the safety zone. And he gave you new life, transfer, transferred you from one place to another. 
And this is what he did. He saved your spirit, ruach. God's spirit came into your ruach, your spirit. There's a big S for capital spirit, God, and there's a little S in the scriptures for human spirit. That's why when you read, it's a, it's a big S represents the spirit of God. The little S represents the human spirit. He came into our spirit. Watch this now. God's spirit came into our spirit and put a perimeter around our spirit so that it cannot be touched. You are held tightly in the hand of Jehovah, Jesus, Yahweh, Jehovah God, and you cannot be lost. Your soul, however, because it's attached to the things of this world, nefesh, will sometimes take us, take us out of that fence and we'll begin to act worldly. We'll begin to do things that are worldly. We'll run after things that are worldly, folks. That is the nefesh. The, the will of the soul, the appetite, the desires of the soul. In the Greek, it is the noose. The Bible says this. It says, and be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your nefesh, your noose, your mind. Because when that is transcendent, listen, when it's transcendent from one place to another, going upward, you will be able to test and discern that which is it's good, that which is acceptable, that which is pleasing, the perfect will of God. So if our nefesh is not washed in the Torah, the water of the Torah, the word of God, we are acting worldly. And I have to stop because we can go on with this. But watch this now. You're my portion. I have said that I will keep. The word keep here is shama. Let me go back to the word real, real quick, said. What are the three letters there? The two letters. It is Ma, and it basically, it is the Mem, which represents water, and the Lamet, which represents the staff. And so here he is speaking about the waters, the Torah of God, and knowing that he is the shepherd, the master. Now he says, I will keep here. The word is, of course, is Shamar. Shamar. Shamar represents three letters, which is the Shin, which is the Mem, and the Resh, the picture basically is this. There is uh, uh, fire because sh uh, the shin represents fire and the pressure of teeth. So we know that while we're going through this world, there is pressure in the world, but that pressure should never lead us to get out of the water of the Torah and not get out of the head, meaning the leadership of God. He says, I will guard it. He says, I will keep it as a shepherd puts a coral around the, the sheep at night to protect it. I'm going to guard that which you have given me, which is my portion. And the last word is the bar, the bar. It is the dalet, the bet, and the resh. And it represents about an open door to the house of the leader. And this is where we need to keep our focus, for, folks. We need to keep it, number one, Jesus said, I am the door. Hallelujah. The sheep go in and out through me. When they go out, they go out to pasture, they, to eat. And when they come in, they come in to rest. I am their rest. I am their leader. I am their shepherd. This is what it's about. And then John says in Revelation, oh, I love it. He says, I saw a door in heaven. It was open and he heard a voice saying, come up here to me. You see, the, the dimension of that door is different than the dimension here of the earth. We're walking here on the earth, but we got to go spiritually through a greater door to see God's power and provision because the bet represents his house and the resh represents his leadership. Wow. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I pray that you will be led to eat God's bread. Amen.